Well, we're at Kilani on a really, really hot day to have a look at the new BMW M 140i. Really, this car fits exactly almost in price and uh, performance with the Audi S3, which we've also got here to look at a bit later. What we have here are two cars that represent the parent company's design philosophies. The BMW and the Audi are quite different in the way that they come to the same place. They cost more or less the same money. The BMW is resolutely rear-wheel drive and front engine, and the Audi four-wheel drive with the engine quite far out over the front wheels. So these two cars are going to do the same thing, but in very different ways. Obviously this car needs to put people inside it and luggage and so on, but the engine is moved back as far as possible to the firewall. You'll notice that the engine is about halfway. Half of the engine is in front of the front struts. If we compare that to the Audi where almost the whole engine is in front of the front struts. The M140 comes with upgraded brakes. Kilani is very hard on brakes. I'm expecting some brake fading today, especially in the heat. It also has a smaller front tire than the back, slightly narrower because of the rear wheel drive. The, it wants to, uh, needs all the help it can get at the back with a slightly wider tire. The M140 also doesn't have an LS diff. It's, a, it's a, an option and I think quite a big omission. But we'll be able to see now when we go onto the track whether this little package can put the power on and where exactly it fits in. In my mind, it's going to struggle to beat the Honda Type R, which is a really specialized uh, uh, track car. So we're looking at uh, something obviously a bit slower than the M2 and the A45, somewhere around the Honda Type R's time. Audi's design philosophy is to build a four-wheel drive car, and the S3 is no exception. The engine is right over the front here. Most of it is in front of the front wheels. That makes the car exceptionally stable um, and also frees up a lot of space inside the cabin. You'll notice that when you look at the, front, the tires, that they are the same size because the Audi doesn't have a traction problem, okay, because of the four-wheel drive system. This makes the car exceptionally stable and useful in conditions where the surface is changing or it's, it's wet. So although the S3 is probably more uh, road-based than, say, the RS3, we're going to give it a, a whirl around Kilani and see where it ends up in our performance table. So we're in the Audi S3, about to leave the pits. So we'll see, in spite of all this traction and fairly good turning and so on, it's probably not going to do a very fast lap time. The four-wheel drive system also saps power from the uh, car in its top speed. But it helps in areas like braking and obviously stability in the corners. In the rain, a four-wheel drive system would be really excellent. See that mid-corner understeer, where the car didn't want to rotate around, it's making it slow. There we had dirty overs there, which was quite nice. So obviously, there's something with the driving style that one can do to help the car around the corners. Look at that. Nice turning over steer, which is great. But I have a tendency to drive in on the brakes, which creates understeer. It's something I learned, I guess, from racing all the rear-wheel drive cars. So I would have to adapt my technique a little bit, possibly, to get the most out of this car. Gear changes. The new gearbox is already great. So this car would be absolutely fantastic over a pass or on your favorite winding road. As a track car, I'm afraid it's not a lot of fun. It's exceptionally composed, very safe motor car, but 228 kilowatts is just not enough power for the chassis. My opinion is that four-wheel drive car should have at this point probably more than 270, 280 kilowatts to make up for the, the power sapping of that four-wheel drive drivetrain. So um, this has really got the same power as a Type R, which is, which is front-wheel drive, which does a much better lap time. On the road, however, 
it's going to be a marvellous motor car. So as we're leaving the pits here, I'm going to put the BMW M140 in its Sport Plus mode and BMW kindly switched off the DSC system. So it's got no interference at all. Remember we said this car doesn't have an LS diff, which I'm expecting will give a bit of a problem when we're trying to put the power down because the inside rear wheel will start spinning. The open diff puts the uh, power to where, where it'll go the easiest. So that means um, the inside wheel will spin. Where an LS diff, uh, it's called limit slip diff, will actually make the two wheels spin at the same speed, which helps the outside wheel put the power down as well. And obviously without an LS diff or a locking diff of some kind, you can't really do donuts and and uh, and drifting so um, this car will be very good at that i can already feel it's quite a lot softer we're going to see what lap time it can do it's extremely hot today The motor doesn't feel like a turbo. It does the same thing as the Type R. You, if you give it a little bit of fuel just before you really want to go, the engine makes a little bit more power than you expected in a weird way. So it's harder to drive uh, smoothly than a normally aspirated engine. Now the same kind of feeling in the Type R momentarily sort of right there when you get on the gas but it's a lovely car it's involving it's fun I think with the addition of the LS diff it will be great obviously I'd want it a bit stiffer but um, I don't think really that's where this car fits in Today's lap time is a little bit slower the, um, than I would have thought. So in a weird way, where the S3 could cope with a lot more power, the M140 can't. I think it's at the limit of, of the power that this chassis in this way can handle. So the M140 is a lot of fun, very involving to drive. Limited by its suspension, if, if I could say that. The engine is extremely powerful, a lovely six-cylinder engine, but um, it really wants the suspension of the M2, and I mean, uh, that's, that's what it is. It's, it's a road-biased car, so it's slightly too narrow at the back, and it doesn't have an LS diff. I think if you spec one with the LS diff, it would make a big difference. But, um, but on the track right now, the, the narrowness of the back, coupled with the lack of the uh, LS diff, makes it a little bit uh, twitchy from the back but as a road car it's absolutely marvelous because nobody can reach the limit of this car on the road um, without being you know completely crazy so as a road car it's really fantastic it's a sweet sounding engine it's a great package